In this video, I'll show you five day trading strategies that professional traders use. You can use them on the five minute time frame and they will work on any market. So let's get into our first strategy. Let's start with one of the most efficient day trading strategies that you can use on any market and on a five minute time frame. And for that, we're going to use the yesterday high and the low as our confluence. So in TradingView, there is an indicator called high yesterday low or high low yesterday. And then you just get those channels for yesterday's high and for yesterday's low on your charts. Obviously, you could just as well use a horizontal line and plot it on yesterday's high and low works exactly the same. And what you will often see is that the market is trading back into a previous low. So here you can see the red line corresponds to the low yesterday here. The green line corresponds to the high of yesterday around here. And very often you will see the market make a move into such a low or into such a high and then find resistance at those lows. The yesterday high, the yesterday low are very, very important because they are 100% objective. They are not as subjective as support resistance, trend lines or anything else that most traders use. So this is 100% objective. A lot of traders will use that. A lot of algorithmic based trading strategies are going to use objective tools and this is one of the highest probability ones. So what we're going to do is we're going to look for signals. We're going to look for rejections. We can look for fake outs, for example, at those levels. So for example, here we had a yesterday high and you can see this is then here uh, the, the line that we get on our current day price chart. And what you see first that the market pushed into the level, reversed and then made a breakout. So very often the market will actually keep going through a previous day high and low and just start a new trend. Not always will this hold, so that's very important. However, if you see that you have a breakout and then a few candles later, keep in mind we are on a five minute time frame, a few candles later, so 30 minutes later, we are back below the yesterday high and low. This is a very, very important sign of a rejection. You may, for example, add other confluence factors as I will show you in a moment. So for example, we could add the pivot point and maybe we get our weekly or the daily pivot point here. We could also look and see, is there a moving average confluence that could help um, us understand why the market is bouncing here and also look for stronger areas of confluence. And when the market is back into such a um, low or back below a previous high, this is often then giving us a sign of rejection. And very, very often you'll see that on that day, the market is then going to follow through away from such a breakout. So you can see the market is back below the range, back below the yesterday's high. So clearly this breakout attempt doesn't seem to be very strong. The market is here. And at this point, many traders are going to position themselves short or wait for a retest of this area. So previous resistance is what we have here. And this could turn into a big level. So the market may move into this from underneath. And if you are a pullback trader, this could then give you the entry opportunity. You can see the market is touching here or almost touching previous uh, yesterday's high. We have uh, pretty much an engulfing candle here, so a strong um, bullish uh, bearish candle. And this could then be your sign to get into a uh, continuation trade after the fake out. And this is then what happened afterwards. So very nicely, you can see the market completed the Elliott wave to the upside. Wave one, two, three, four, five. Elliott wave completed. And then we start a new Elliott wave. One, two, three, four, five, back into the previous low. Here's also a demand area. So if you're trading, for example, the fake out of yesterday's high and low, you may be able to use um, here the pullback and then the demand area as your ultimate target. So that could be your first day trading strategy. Next, we're going to take a look at a pivot point turnaround and then I'll give you a second pivot point alternative strategy because they are really, really helpful and quite um, powerful. So what we have here is again the five minute chart. We have here a new pivot point. Uh, so the pivot point has just reset. You can see that we are very early on. And what you also see is that the market seems to be in an uptrend here and we are looking at a potential sell off or it could also be just a corrective wave and we could then continue our way up. So we want to look for what happens around the pivot point. The pivot point is really, really important. 
So whether you use the daily or the weekly pivot point, they are very well respected. A lot of traders use them also. A lot of big traders, big players use them because they are just uh, so powerful and they are really objective. So there's no guesswork where the pivot point is. Every trader is always looking at the same pivot point. So you can see we are starting to trade around um, on the pivot point. After we get below the pivot point, we close the gap and now there's a lot of indecision. We can see that to the upside we have or well, we are green on a very uh, well respected level. So roughly around here, maybe we could also extend the level to uh, here to where we have the high points of the wicks. And as long as we are staying below that, um, I would always caution you to be in a trade. Whenever you see that the market is trading in a tight range, it's better to stay out and wait for the market to pick a direction. However, if the market breaks out here to the upside, we are calling this a pivot point rejection. And at this point, you could either get in on the breakout here or if you want to wait because retests are just so common and there's often a lot of noise, especially on the five minute around the pivot point, you would wait for the retest here. And that could be um, the pivot point retest after the rejection. Or alternatively, you could, if you have missed maybe that, maybe you weren't in front of your computer, you didn't catch it, maybe there was not a good pullback, you could look, okay, where's the market going to make a new higher high? And when are we going to continue this uptrending phase? Because at this point, it's clear we are in an uptrend. This is a correction wave. We rejected the pivot point. Then we are trading back into the highs. And if we can break above that, there's a very good chance that we're going to see a continuation to the upside away from the pivot point. In general, what you will often see is that in an uptrend, the market will come back to a pivot point, retest it as support and then keep moving higher. And this is what happened afterwards. You can see the market broke above it. This is a liquidity run, which is something that we're going to cover in the later parts of the day trading strategy videos. And this is a pattern in and of itself that you are able or that you may be able to use to find trades on those liquidity runs. And then you can see the market pushed higher afterwards. But really everything started with the rejection of the pivot point and then the break and the retest and then the continuations into highs. So this is the foundation of the strategy. This is the, the component, the base component that shows you that the bears are not able to take over fully and the bulls quickly regained and drove the price higher. Pivot points are really powerful and let's take a look at a combination where we talk about the pivot point and also to triple tap. So a triple tap, I made several videos about a triple tap. It's basically three consecutive higher highs. It could also be here actually three consecutive lower lows, but each consecutive high or following high is weaker. So you can see whereas the market was easily able to move higher here, from this high to this high, this already was much shorter than what we've seen here. And then from this high to this high, first of all, it took much longer. There was much bigger of a sell off between and also the high was not really convincing. What we also see is that here we have our pivot point. So this is our daily pivot point. The market is trading into it. Try to break above it and currently it's struggling. Of course, at this point, the market could just trade higher and not respect the pivot or just break through it and continue on the upside. However, our trading plan in this case would be since we have here the early onset of a pattern, we could wait for the market to break below that or also break below the previous support here. As long as we haven't broken the trend line and out of the pattern, there's really no need to or no reason to be short. However, if and the trading plan is immer an if then scenario, if the price breaks the pattern, then we are looking at a great set of confluence factors. First of all, we have a mature trend that is likely to reverse. We have the triple tab, which is a potential exhaustion pattern. We have here the daily pivot point, which can act as a strong support and resistance. And if we clear the pattern, we are making lower highs and lower lows. So then we are looking at a uh, strong set of confluence. At this point, we have not really much. We have a lot of potential great ideas, but right now they are not strong enough to go short. It changes very, very quickly afterwards. We have the trend line break. We have the break of the low. We have here now our retest. And then you can see how the market really collapsed. So those are called, and I made a video about that last week, 
uh, accumulation and distribution zones. In this case, this is a distribution because it's at the turning point from an uptrend to a downtrend. And very often you'll see that the market trades in those accumulation zones for quite a while or distributions. There's a lot of buying and selling going on. And on the breakout out of those zones, that's usually where you have those huge flushes of buying and selling interest. So on the breakout, you will often see a lot of momentum. There can be noise. And as we will see in a moment, there are often also liquidity runs which are happening here. In this case, we didn't have one, but they're very common as we will see in our next example. Now let's take a look at a breakout strategy, whereas previously we've looked mostly at structural strategies. So we use horizontal levels and just chart context. Now we're going to take a look at a open strategy and we're going to look at the London Open. There are strategies to also use the Asian Open, the New York Open, but usually the London Open will have a very, very big shift in momentum. So we are coming from the Asian session, which is often, not always, often a little bit more quiet to the London Open, where suddenly you have a lot of money coming into the market and that's often where the markets wake up. And in TradingView, there, uh, there are a few indicators that you can use for those sessions. Just search for Forex sessions, for example, or trading sessions. And then you will see those backgrounds here. At the beginning, when uh, this blue box comes, this is the open of the um, London session. And what you want to look for for a London Open breakout strategy is that before London opens, you generally want to see that the market is in a tight congestion. So trading in a narrow, well-defined range. So it could be any pattern. In this case, we have a trend line to the upside and to the downside. So we have kind of a, a flag or a wedge pattern, probably more or less. And you want to ma really make sure that the pattern is very tight. It's also very well-defined because a well-defined pattern then allows you to have um, a better breakout approach. So at this point, it's very clear. The boundaries of the pattern are here and we could wait for the market to clear this area here. So as soon as the market uh, breaks above this area, you would wait for, or you would go for a breakout or a retest, or as I've shown you just a, a minute ago, uh, a dirty retest. And this is what happens afterwards. You can see the market cleared it. No dirty retest in this case, but you'll see that with the London Open, just maybe an hour later, um, you can see that the trend emerged. And very often you'll see that the trend early on in the London session is then what keeps going, unfolding, at least um, for the next few hours. Here as well, the London Open has just happened. Here's the, um, the border of the blue box. So we're just a few candles into the London session. Prior to the London Open, you can see the market is trading in a very well-defined rectangle range. The market last day seems to have come from a downtrend, or at least in the Asian session, that's what happened. We're here in a downtrend. We have bottomed out here with a double bottom. You can also see that we are here on the British pound Canadian dollar and the British pound in general moves a lot during the um, London session because that's the home session for the British pound. So it makes sense to look for London breakout strategies on, for example, the British pound, the euro, the Swiss franc, uh, those usually move quite a bit on the London open. And so we just want to wait for the breakout, which happened here. And you can see afterwards the trend for the day was set after the breakout. Again, a classifier or a qualifier for such a London breakout strategy could be the tight range and also the previous trending context. If you see double bottoms, if you see a long previous trend that has lost steam, that's a good starting point for your analysis. The liquidity run is next and this is going to be probably an eye opener for a lot of traders because a lot of traders are struggling with the concepts around the liquidity run and they will often find themselves into trades that don't make the money. However, it seems like they are able to pick the right direction. So let's take a look at what actually is going on here. So what you will see is very common. The market is coming from a downtrend and this is the 15 minute, but you can use this just as well on the five minute as I will show you in a moment. So we're in a downtrend. Then we have a so-called accumulation pattern. The market, first of all, is giving us here a divergence. Then on the right side, we are making higher highs or higher lows. And the highs at this point are trading into the same resistance area. The market is now defined in this pattern. This is the accumulation phase. And at this point, we don't know if the market is going to really reverse or is this just going to be a continuation and it could also just turn into a flag and the market moves lower. However, if the market breaks out, then we know this is an accumulation and then we're going to look for those liquidity runs. 
So now we have a, a, another signal. Now we have our first higher high. This is very, very important. Whereas previously the market made lower lows and lower highs, now we are making not only higher lows, but this is our first higher high as well. Very, very big shift in market structure. The market keeps making a higher high. So a lot of traders probably went in here or maybe here on the breakout. And just think about it. Where is where they're going to put their stop loss? Their stop loss is going to be either just around the breakout level. Maybe they're using the swing low. If they want to be extra safe, they're going to put it here below, below this low. So somewhere in this vicinity, there are going to be a lot of stops. So stop clusters um, are going to be in this area a lot and a lot. And the liquidity run is then what happens very, very commonly. And then this is what traders will then say, my breakouts don't work out. The breakouts are a bad signal and they just don't work out because what I'm going to do is as the trade progresses and moves in their favor, the first thing is they're going to move their stop loss to break even. So probably somewhere around here. And so you're going to have stops clustered along here, stops clustered here, and a lot of break even stops as well. So in this area, there's just going to be so many stops. And the liquidity run is exactly what is looking for those stops and it's trying to free up liquidity. And very often you'll see those deep retests. I made a video uh, about this concept and called it the dirty retest. And this is exactly what is happening. The market is fishing for those stops and it's trying to liquidate those stops, freeing up liquidity. And then very often what you'll see is that in those areas and this retest phenomenon is so, so common. I am a breakout trader for more than 12, 13 years. And over the last few years, I've seen the tendency increase to see those dirty retests. They were not super common um, seven, eight years ago. But over the last few years, the tendency for those dirty retests, those liquidity runs has increased significantly. And very often you'll see that after the or during those dirty retests, you will get another pattern. So the pattern of the dirty retest or after the dirty retest can be your trading strategy in and of itself. It's still okay to trade those breakouts. But if you're trading those breakouts, you have to understand that this is very common. So this has to be factored in not only in your stop loss placement. So you don't want to have a stop loss that is too close. And also it needs to be factored into your trade management. So if you move your stop loss, you want to give it time. You probably want to wait for moving your stop loss until you have seen the liquidity run or until the market has moved so far in your favor that even if a liquidity run um, occurs, you want to be out. You don't want to go and let a very profitable trade turn into a potential losing trade again. And that is something you need to factor in into your trading plan. If you don't want to take those breakouts and if you want to only focus into those liquidity runs, you can certainly do that. You can turn this into a trading strategy by itself and wait for breakouts to seemingly fail to provide you a very with a very deep, dirty retest liquidity run, then give you this inverse head and shoulders, for example. Uh, it could also be, uh, for example, a triangle. It could be a flag pattern. Any pattern could um, occur uh, after those dirty retests and then trade those. And this could be your starting point for a strategy as well. So at the base, you look for the breakout. You wait for those breakout traders to get trapped for those liquidity runs to happen. And then you wait for the emergence of a pattern around the liquidity run. And then you could jump on those breakouts again.